But uh, it's just kind of funny because of that thing. And then these other things occur, kind of like, this is, which is what I love. This is an Edward Hopper thing that I found, like the, the, the lonely house. And it's kind of, it's very much like, you know, this house. You know, it's kind of this thing that, uh, there's these kinships that you figure out later on. Like I never saw Hopper's picture before I took this, but, you know, I love finding these things afterwards and, uh, and seeing how there's a real relationship between people's work. Um, and then in terms of relationships between people's work, you know, there's many, many people that I've been influenced by. I'll just kind of go through um, some of them and, uh, and run through them. You know, Robert Adams is somebody that I've always loved his work. <laughs> he photographed in, uh, in and around Denver, like the suburbs of Denver um, in the 70s, and he's been a huge influence on me. Um, and then Stephen Shore also, you know, these color, you know, color photography from the 70s, I think is really, um, some, there's something about it that's particularly special. Um, and then the Beshers, like a lot of the new topographics photographers, which are, which was a movement that happened in the, you know, uh, in photography in the, in the, the 70s, like 76, kind of in that era. Um, and also, you know, Akshay is something that I've always loved. Um, I love that his, there's a poetry in his work that it's so straightforward, yet it's very poetic in some way. So this photograph's of Paris. And then this photograph is by uh, um, Roy D. Caraba. Um, and he's, uh, he's this, he was an African-American photographer. He passed away this year. Um, but he, I had this workshop with him in Colorado, and he kept saying, you know, when he came out of the dark room, and he would be like, oh, go back and make it darker. You know, go back and make it darker. And it's interesting how that, I do that a lot with my work. And uh, it's curious, this photograph, which I really love, is this uh, picture that he used to, um, he, he, he told me the story about this. He, like, he was going to visit somebody, and, he's, and he got out of the elevator and, and walked around the corner and saw this, and he was like, and he ran home to get his tripod. And then he came back and took this picture because he realized that this was, it reminded him exactly of the, the, the hallway he walked down as a child to go to his apartment. And, uh, you know, there's something about that in a lot of, in, in a lot of my work, but I very much find, no matter where I go to shoot, I always seem to find these places that look like here, um, and that, that have this quality of, you know, kind of where I grew up in some way. So, and that's what Di Carapa was after in his picture. Um, and then Diane Arbus has been a big influence on my work. I love the darkness and the seediness to her pictures in the wing of realness. And then this, you know, this is a Joel um, Shapiro sculpture. This is a, uh, you know, I love that this is, it's like a, you know, it's a rectangle with a triangle on top. And, you know, that form says a lot to us and we immediately start thinking of things when we see that shape. Um, and so I'm very much kind of interested in that. And then this, I love, this is like a, an old found photograph of somebody, you know, on the prairie. It's like, but it's like their homestead and they're proud of it. You know, they have this, you know, it's a guy and his wife, his gun, he's got something he caught, you know, and they've got two chairs and that's their little existence. And, but they're, they're, it's important. And then this is um, uh, one of my really big influences, Larry Sultan, um, who unfortunately passed away earlier this year, um, or in December. Um, and, uh, he was somebody, he was like one of my main mentors in school. Um, and he was like, the reason I went to, to California was to study with him. And he was an amazing, amazing teacher. And he was able to teach me, there was a lot of lessons that he left with me. Um, and so many other people, he had like thousands of students that he's, you know, affected. But um, he's one of the people that I always, you know, would go to about my work and look at his pictures. We would look at each other's books before we would like send them to the publisher to make sure that things were like, you know, is this good enough or is this, you know, should I get rid of this picture? Should I get rid of that? What do you think of this? And we would go back. We had a friendship where I met him in 94 and um, uh, he was a huge influence on my, on my work. Um, and then another person that, you know, Larry, uh, Larry Sultan, another person, Jim Goldberg is another person that I have, like, it's been a big influence on me. He's um, somebody that was kind of like a, we just have this, like, it's funny when you're not a student, like, it's, when you want sincere feedback about your work, you have to really seek it out, and you can't get it. There's a lot of people that you can't get it from because they have other interests involved in it. So you have to find these people that you can really trust to 
get real feedback about your work. And and Larry and Jim, you know, Larry was, but Jim is one of those people that, you know, we you know really lean on each other to kind of make our work better and stronger. Um, so he's a big influence on my work. And then um, you know, and then these things are kind of interesting. This is like this plow and hearth catalog that I had gotten in the mail one day. I looked at it and I thought, huh, that's kind of interesting. This is really a lot like my pictures, but they couldn't be farther away from each other, you know, in terms of what they kind of talked about and, and what they meant. So it's also, it's kind of interesting, like there's this cliche with, I mean, it's like the light on in the house is sort of this, um, it's this kind of like, it's this very standard picture that, you know, you take. It's every architectural photographer takes that picture at dusk with the lights on. And um, it's just kind of interesting to see what you can do with it, you know, and you can take it into something. You know, everything's been done, but it hasn't been done, you know, um, which is interesting. That's one thing I'm learning. This is me shooting, and then this is me after I shoot. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I put these pictures up here because uh, um, this is, deliberately, these are very voyeuristic photographs, and I put these up here because as a joke, I have to, like, to say that this is really not what my work's about, like, there's... You don't see anything in my pictures, you know. You don't. You look in these windows and there's lights on, but you never see anything at all. It's purely in your imagination and purely what the viewer brings to the pictures. And so it's kind of um, it's kind of interesting just to sort of note that. But I think that you know my work and a lot of work functions like the viewer completes the picture in some way. So I think that's an interesting like, thing to think about. That's uh, to be Stewart from Rear Window, and this is a book called. A Dirty Windows by Mary Alpern. She uh, was photographed inside the windows of this place down on Wall Street. Um, and then, you know, sort of like trying to think about what else I was interested in. This is a book that I found, like, you know, it's called How to Kill a Golden State. And it, um, it's very interesting. It's like this book that shows how messed up California is um, and uh, what we built and how it was just kind of a big mess. Um, and I started to think about that and started to think about going to shoot these places, like, you know, like shoot in the, like behind the mall or behind the supermarket or what was next to these places. And so I started to kind of go out and, and, and photograph, you know, in these more sort of commercial settings instead of the suburban, you know, settings. And this is like the Kentucky Fried Chicken drive through you know, which is this strange that people live and sleep, you know, right next to where, you know, somebody takes the orders. Um, and, you know, and then I started to think about, you know, this is kind of a joke, but like, but this is a, this is a um, John Baltasari painting, and it says, you know, it is only when you have been painting for quite some time that you begin to realize your compositions seem to lack impact, that they are too ordinary. That is when you will start to break all the so-called rules of composition and, then, and think in terms of design. Then you can distort shapes and invent forms and be on your way towards being a creative artist. And I kind of, in a lot of ways, I started to do that. I started to sort of back up and think about perspective in, in photographing these buildings that were longer and deeper and had, you know, different kinds of light in them. Um, and so I kind of set out and just sort of started to do that. Um, and, you know, I love this one I really love. Um, I love all of them. I'm not showing you anything I don't like. But, um, uh, but this is one in particular that, you know, just thinking about that, you know, like how can I make my pictures different? This is the same kind of, this is the same neighborhood, this is exactly the same place where those houses are. Um, and then I just started to think about, like, I would go around the back side of buildings and shoot. You know, this is like, you know, behind 7 Eleven. Um, there always seems to be good, like, there's great light at 7 Eleven, you know, and so it always makes it, it lights up whatever it's next to. This is in Reno, Nevada. I started to travel a lot more and stuff. And instead of shooting in just the Bay Area and, you know, and shooting here, I would also go and drive around and just shoot, which is what I just love to do. I love to get, you know, go somewhere, rent a car, and drive around for a few days and just take pictures. And these are in Reno also. This is in near JFK. Um, 